Luke chapter 10 today, verse 17. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Here are 70 evangelists that the Lord chooses to go out on a very unique and a very special mission to preach the gospel of the kingdom. He gives them the ability to perform signs and wonders. And whenever they come back, they're so thrilled about what the Lord has done and the things that they have seen and even how the very demons are subject unto their name and they're rejoicing in all of those things. And those are things, yes, to rejoice in. But the Saviour says, don't rejoice in those things. Rejoice in this, that your names are written in heaven. And what he's really indicating is that having your name recorded in heaven, <coughs> written in the Lamb's Book of Life, is the highest privilege that heaven affords. You know, many of God's people in these days might rejoice in many, many different things. Some legitimate, some maybe not all that important. But we're living in a day whenever we are encouraged to rejoice in big numbers, in success, in popularity, in financial prosperity, in health and wealth, and all of these different things. These are the things that maybe the modern evangelical church place so much pride and so much emphasis in. All of the material things all of the external things, things that are so subject to change. And this has been proved over the last three or four months with the COVID-19 crisis that many things can change very, very quickly. We could have been attending a church several months ago, attended by thousands of people, and now we can't attend church at all. Things can change. But here's one thing that is unchangeable. Your names are written in heaven. There's a lovely verse in the book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse number 16, where the Lord says, I have graven you upon the palms of my hands. That word graven, it denotes something that's permanent. It denotes something that's immutable, something that's unchangeable. Just like the Ten Commandments, whenever God, with his own finger on tables of stone, engraved the law, indicating that the moral law has a permanent nature. It's here to stay and he uses that same type of terminology regarding the names of his people. I have graven you upon my hands. We are ever before him permanently. Our names written in heaven is something that's unchangeable. Not only is it something unchangeable, but it's something unbelievable. Think of it, if you're a Christian today and you're born again of the Spirit of God, you're washed in the Redeemer's blood, that your name is written in heaven. I love the words of that hymn, I'm not ashamed to own my Lord or to defend his cause. And the last verse says, Then will he own my worthless name before his Father's face, and in the new Jerusalem appoint my soul a place. This worthless name, unknown by the masses, is known by God, written in heaven, graven upon the palms of his hands, written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's unbelievable. You know, one of the reasons why I believe the gospel is because it's so unbelievable. Humanly speaking, who could have ever have conceived of such a gospel that the creator of all things, the Son of God, would look upon a world that's cursed and lost and broken and would come into that world himself and take upon himself the nature of man and be born as a man and live amongst men and fulfill the law of God and live in poverty and then go to a cross and bearing shame and scoffing rude in our place stand condemned as a, as a sinful man and take our sins and his own body upon the tree. He never became a sinner, but he was made sin for us. He who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And he was viewed by this world as one smitten of God and afflicted, viewed as a lawbreaker, a transgressor, a blasphemer, a malefactor, and that was the Son of God. Friends, it's unbelievable. And then that he would rise again from the grave. But I believe it because it's beyond human comprehension or human invention. 
The fact that your name is written in heaven is unchangeable. It's unbelievable. And it's uncomparable. Nothing in the world compares to it. The Lord says, even if the demons are subject to you, rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Nothing compares to it. You could have your name written in so many different things. W.P. Nicholson made a famous quote years ago. You can have your name in the church role. You can have your name in the Sunday school role. But if it's not in the Lord's role, it might as well be in a sausage roll. Nothing compares to having your name written in heaven on the roll of the Lord. When the roll is called up yonder, <coughs> I wonder, will you be there? The Old Testament priest wore a breastplate over his chest, 12 stones in it, and written upon each one of those 12 stones were the names of the tribes of Israel. He bore them on his shoulders. He had them close to his heart. Just as the Savior has the names of his people in his book, on his hands, on his shoulders, and close to his heart. It's unchangeable, it's unbelievable, and it's uncomparable. I wonder, is your name written in heaven? Give your heart to Christ today. Make sure that your name's recorded in glory.